Come on, lift your voice. Yeah. You are good, you are good. Mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Now, in one minute, I want you to lift your voice. And place a demand on God tonight. Tell him to do something new in your life. Tell him to touch you tonight. Tell him that you have come to experience his mercy, his goodness. Lift your voice and raise your expectation to the heavens tonight in prayer. Lift your voice and pray. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Raise your voice. The louder you sound, the closer God will get to you. But Amaius cried out. And when he cried out, the Lord heard him. Raise your voice and cry to him desperately. Lord, do something tangible something remarkable let this be my night i've heard the testimony of others let today be my day i came for an encounter i came for a touch i came for a visitation i didn't come to waste my time you have not called the seed of jacob to seek you in vain Come on, come on, cry. 60 more seconds. Those of you online, from whatever part of the world you are following, I want you to pray. Create an expectation through your prayers. Lord, visit me. Visit my family. Let an anointing fall upon my life. Let a grace come upon my situation. The spirit is moving. Lift your hands. All over the world, as the prophet said it should be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. As the world has covered the sea All over this place The Spirit is moving <laughs> All over this place As the prophet said it should be All over this place there's a mighty manifestation of the glory of the Lord as the world has covered the sea. Lift your hands. Before we even get into the service, the Lord is showing me two people. He's healing right now. The first person, you have a heart condition. I don't know what is wrong, but I see a problem around your chest and it's connected to your heart. But God is touching you right now. 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 
and there's somebody here with pains that goes from your spine down to your waist right now God is healing you we don't have to get into the service God is healing you right now I trust that we'll take the testimony of those two people the heart condition and the spine down to your waist I see the Lord touching you right now father thank you for what you will do tonight glorify your name glorify your name I decrease that you will increase move in this place wrought signs and wonders do miracles that your people will know that you are the God of the living and that you are alive forevermore in Jesus great name we pray I want you to shout a big amen. amen how many of you believe God for a visitation tonight I want you to walk to just one, two, three persons and tell them, friend, if you came here tonight, get ready for a surprise. Just walk to one, two, three persons. Say, get ready for a surprise. Please take your seat. God bless you. to be sensitive tonight I started to feel the power of God from Friday from Friday I started to feel an atmosphere of God's power and presence and I just can't I just can't let you know tonight to expect the unexpected and one thing I know is for, for sure is that God will exceed our expectations how many of you believe that mommy is welcome good to see you um, can we celebrate God for pastor mrs. Lois Sunday Daniel God bless you mommy the wife to the assistant chaplain amen she's the wife to the assistant chaplain of the University of Maiduguri mommy you're welcome God bless you and I'm told that um, her friend is here too, Pastor Mrs. Alice Ojo. God bless you, ma. From Word of Life Bible Church, right? Full Gospel Church. Yes, you're welcome, mommy. Good to see you. And every other person here, any minister in the congregation, I celebrate and honor you. You're welcome. And I want to welcome every one of us to October Special Miracle Service. And I trust God to do good tonight. Can we celebrate God for those following online? Um, I know that there are so many people following us on social media from different parts. Um, God bless you. I pray that um, you'll be part of what God is doing here in Jesus' name. Before we go into the word, I just want to do a short teaching that will build our faith it's not a bible studies it's a miracle service and i want to maximize every time we have and, um, but i just want to do a little teaching from the word so that our faith can be built up it is possible to be around a zone or an area or a location where the power of god is and yet you don't get to contact it or you don't get to receive from it the reason is because faith remains the only means by which you can receive from God. And so I would like to just help us build our faith um, so that we can create expectations for what God will do tonight. You know, I love miracle services. You know why? I love to teach the word of God. I love to worship. I love the presence of God. But I love miracle service. The reason is because... God doesn't seem to amaze me. I don't know about you, but God doesn't stop in amazing me with the great things that he does. It's always a time to look forward to seeing the power and the presence of God do mighty things. That you come with 
situations that have made it um, almost impossible to be solved through human um, solutions and all of a sudden in a moment of time as you contact the power of God what looks like an age-long affliction or a condition that has deterred or deferred every human possible solution exits your life and by the grace of God you step into a new season of enjoying the blessings and the grace of God so I love to look forward to every miracle service left for me I wish we should be having miracle services every day how many of you are looking forward to that now before I start to teach I want to tell you something about next year and something about um, our annual program night of wonders and the reason why I'm telling you is because of the things that God is already showing me will happen next year is going to be an amazing year next year is going to be a year of revival next year is going to be an awakening such force force of the move of God's power and presence that will go across the globe and this afternoon while I was praying the Lord told me that when it comes to revival and the advancement of the kingdom in Nigeria this region this territory is going to begin to experience an awakening we are going to begin to enjoy our share now let me stop there because I'm tempted to say so much about next year but I want us to prepare for night of wonders service it's an all-night service where we strictly just come and spend time in the presence of God and watch God just move in amazing ways it's a miracle service of its own it's just that it is greater you see there are three dimensions of the move of God when it comes to the operation of his spirit the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4 that God bore witness through the preaching of the apostles by the gifts of the spirit by miracles and by signs of wonders the gifts of the spirit happens when you are under the anointing miracles happens when you are under the presence of God but signs and wonders happen when you are under the glory so these are different dimensions by which God moves. There is a level of limitation when what you experience is just the gift of the Spirit. It means that you are only confined to the gift that operates in you per time. But when the glory comes, signs and wonders become natural. The glory is the environment of heaven invading earth. And as a ministry, that is one of the mandates we are called to do. To proclaim the kingdom the power and the glory of God so this year's night of wonders I want you to look forward in expectation because God is going to do strange things I hope I will not be criticized after that service but in case I'm criticized no problem I'm ready for that because what I saw God will move in ways like we have never seen God is reawakening the move of his power and his glory across the world through the church. And I want us to prepare for that meeting with expectation. But let's just get busy with tonight and trust God for what he will do. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 Something special Supernatural About your name Jesus Something happens when I mention 
your name. Can you whisper the name Jesus? Jesus. Whisper it again. Jesus. Whisper it again. Jesus. Whisper it with consciousness. Whisper it again. Whisper it again. Say it again. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So the Bible tells us that there is one password by which you can receive from God. And that password is called faith. It says, He that cometh to God must believe. Must believe. Now, two verses before this, actually, this is a chapter that was dedicated to faith. And then, two verses before this verse, the Bible began to speak about the elders, in other words, saints of the Old Testament, and how that by their faith they walked with God. And they were able to please God. Thank you. The Bible spoke about Abel. As for Abel, it was his sacrifice. You must understand that by this time, man had fallen and had been sent out of the garden. Please follow me tonight. I may be very calm, but don't be distracted, okay? By this time, man had been sent out of the presence of God, out of the garden. And it was in this situation that Abel and Cain grew. And the Bible says Abel was a shepherd, while Cain was a tiller of the ground. And the Bible spoke about the sacrifice that they made towards God. But the Bible says God had respect for Abel's offering. And the reason was because he did it out of faith. He did it out of a conviction that though I had no relationship with this God, but I know that there is a God that exists that created the heavens and the earth. And he is the reason why, in as much as the curse had been released, that man would suffer to bring forth from the ground. Are we following? If you are here, say amen. I said follow me, because many of you <laughs> will miss today. God had already laid a curse that man will have to suffer and toil with the sweat of his brow. But Abel recognized that whatever he had received came from a God. Even though he, had, he couldn't see that God, even though he had no relationship with that God, he was convinced of the things he had been told. So for Abel, it was his work, W-O-R-K, his sacrifice. And the Bible says he pleased God by reason of that sacrifice because it was done out of faith and for Enoch the Bible says he walked with God he entered into a relationship with a God that was invisible because he was convinced of the things he had been told and so the Bible says these two men were able to please God because they operated by faith what is faith faith is an action faith is not a wish faith is not hope faith is not hope because hope is an expectation for something that you cannot see the bible says that hope that is seen is not hope and faith is the substance so faith is beyond hope faith is not a wish faith is actually an action that a an individual would take because of a conviction that he has and of course that conviction is based on certain level of information that the individual has received about God about his ability and about his nature that means if it is by faith there will be a corresponding action that's why I can tell if you have faith based on the action you take and that action is what human beings call risk for instance there were four friends while Jesus was on earth 
the bible says that jesus was teaching in a house in capernaum and the house was filled and then the bible says these four friends had a friend who was bedridden and they couldn't get into the house because the house was filled up but then the bible says they were so desperate and like they knew that their friend would be healed if he met jesus the bible says that they went to the roof and opened up the roof of the house so just knowing that god jesus will heal their friend is not faith but that was the knowledge or the understanding that sponsored faith faith was the action they took what if god didn't heal what if jesus didn't heal their friend what if jesus told them go and come back tomorrow after opening the roof you will pay for aluminium zinc if it's in our days you will pay for aluminium zinc you pay for pop ceiling by the time you are done the money you didn't plan to spend so it was a 50 50 chance that they had but they stepped out to so your action that you take based on a conviction you are convinced it is settled in you that god not only exists but that god is able and capable to do this thing that i'm believing for that is faith and the bible says without faith in other words without those actions that you take that puts the integrity of god and his power on the line that's why we make you pray when we when you come for service like this that prayer is to put an expectation it's like a holy pressure on god forcing him to act because he said in his word that it shall come to pass that before they call i will do what answer he said it so when you are praying you are putting pressure on god that you must obey your word which makes you to answer when i call are we together and the bible says without faith it is impossible to please god that means forget about doing business with god when there is no faith i believe i believe what have you done based on your belief I can assure you that your coming here tonight is an action of your faith and i assure you that you are not walking out of that door the same person and the bible says he that comes to god must believe in other words the prerequisite for coming before god and doing business with him is that you must be convinced that he exists and that he surely will reward those who diligently seek him not seeking what he can do but seeking him when you seek him you get what he can do that means that if you see a man doing business with god or if you see a man coming before god it means he's already convinced about what god can do that's why it says for he that comes to god must believe he came because he believed unfortunately you can come and not believe and then it will just be another service you will come and watch others get their miracle and then you'll go back and that's the reason why you may have attended all the miracle services from february but your life has not experienced anything tangible the reason is because you did not fulfill that scripture by coming with a conviction for us as a ministry it is out of conviction and faith that we know that god would definitely visit his people and that's the reason why we have miracle service back to back otherwise if you are doubting whether god will visit them there will be no need to take that risk so if it is of faith there is an action that we will see that positions you to receive from god The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, still talking about faith now. Verse 13, where the young man quoted from the confession. It says, we have the same spirit of faith as it is written. I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believed and therefore we speak. So you see what I mean when I said, if it is of faith, there will be a corresponding action. It says, I believe, therefore I speak. That's an action. 
I was bold to declare that I am healed even when I was still sick. Why? It was because I believed. He said, we also believe and therefore we speak. And then verse 14, he says, knowing that he that raised Jesus. That means that what we are doing, those words we are confessing, even though our life is yet the opposite, but we are confessing it because not just out of wishful thinking or positive confession. You know what the world teach? They teach you to be positive. Just keep saying good words. Just be, keep saying positive words. <laughs> That's just a psychological attempt to relieve you temporarily from your problems. Huh? I'm not against positive confession, but in the kingdom, it has its place. In the kingdom, the only reason why we make positive confession is to silence doubt in your mind because doubt comes from your mind the enemy begins to paint your f now that you believe your mind is beginning to tap into the faith that is in your heart that is in your spirit and so your mind your imagination is beginning to paint the possibility of what God is going to do is beginning to paint a picture of you stepping out of that sickness is painting a picture of you dropping that crutch is painting you can already see it in your mind that your season to break forth has come and then the enemy begins to send counter information to produce a wrong inf a picture or imagination in your mind that's what we call doubt so the only reason why you use positive confession is to silence that doubt that is in your mind but faith is not really positive confession it says knowing this there is a knowing that sponsors that faith that even before it manifested you have already known it you have understood it you can experience it from inside of you that's why he said faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence you know why it's an evidence of what you cannot see because it is an evidence but it is not evidence enough in the material realm it is evidence in an immaterial realm called the realm of the spirit so your spirit can already see that possibility and you believe now that even though it has not manifested because you have seen it in the spirit it is settled here follow me i'm trying to explain because if we don't get this thing complete you will you will you, you you will realize why people keep coming for meetings hands are laid on them right now as i'm talking there are people who are just waiting after the service to see me they've already positioned their mind that if there is no physical touch they cannot be healed i'm showing you why it has to this it has to be by faith because i can touch you and pour my water on you and you go back receiving nothing that's why we must get it right he said knowing this that he that raised jesus from the dead shall raise us up with him why was paul saying that is because when you read verse 12 from verse 8 down he said we are pressed but not crushed persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed having in our bodies the dying of the lord jesus so that the life of christ will be re revealed in us in verse 12 he says so then we face death walketh in us isn't it and life in you so paul was talking about the fact that as believers they were going through persecutions that were close to death but they were not afraid of it because they knew they had a knowing that even if they die the spirit that raised jesus up will also raise them up so it is that knowledge that sponsors their conviction about resurrection He said, knowing this, that he that raised Jesus from the dead will raise us up as well. Mark chapter 5, let me show us something there. Let's see an example of somebody who understood this principle of faith from scripture and walked by it. If you are with me, say amen. Mark chapter 5 from verse 25, the Bible gives us the story. Jesus was on his way to the house of Jairus, a ruler of the Jews, to heal his daughter who was dead and the bible says while he was on the way there was a woman that had an issue of blood for 12 years the bible says she had suffered so many things 
she had gone for many treatments she had gone to many doctors but to no avail just like some people here but then the bible says i think in verse 27 that she when she had heard about jesus watch this now the bible says when she had heard about jesus she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment why next verse he said for she said right for she said if only i may touch so let's 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 break this down she heard about jesus she was already used to her infirmity for 12 years she heard about jesus and all the miracles he had done and she heard that he was passing and the bible says that hearing activated something in her for faith cometh by hearing and hearing by what so the action she took was based on an information she had received and believed and the bible says for she had said you know that your words declare your intention the bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh isn't it so when you say something it is because you mean it it's only among men that they say what they don't mean so for her to say that if only i can touch the helm of his garment it is because it was concluded in her heart she had seen herself touch jesus and she had seen the blood flow stopped that means the miracle happened before it happened it was registered in her that if only i would touch many people were looking for jesus to come to their house many people were looking for jesus's attention many people were looking for jesus to begin to tell him the history of the problem you remember the man at the pool just like many believers today you go to them and instead of them to believe that you're coming to them is an end to that affliction they begin to tell you the genesis the bible says for she had said let's go on if only i may touch next verse his clothes I shall be made well and immediately the fountain is that the next verse immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power you see how faith everything starts from an invisible realm before it becomes visible the previous verse told us that immediately she touched the blood flow stopped then she felt that means that she was healed but her body had not caught up with the healing hold on i want to explain something go back to that verse the bible says after she touched immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt so it is possible for me to say be healed and you are still feeling the sickness but because that word was sent your healing had been registered it only takes a while for your body to catch up with the healing because everything from god's realm is now it is settled forever oh god psalms 119 verse 89 your word is settled in heaven but when it escapes into our realm it goes through the process of time the bible spoke of spoke of 10 lepers pardon me that met jesus and what did jesus say go show yourself to the priest and the bible says as they went their body caught up but they were healed before they knew they were healed That's why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Because it is registered in the spirit realm first by faith before it materializes. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what? the lord has done for us one more time and now let the weeks say you have to say it to see it you have to confess it to see it. because of what because of what the And now 
I will show you why the principle of faith is that you must say it before it happens. I will show you why before we pray. She was healed, but then after a moment, her body caught up. The Bible says she felt. Just like you are here now, you may not be sick, but what God wants to visit is your finance as you sit under the sound of my voice now. As you are seated right now listening, God may be adjusting something in your finances. But you may not know until you walk out of here and then you begin to see the miracles. I came to tell you that when you saw the miracles was not when it happened. It happened when you knew by faith that it was done. If we must receive from God, this forever remains the principle. Let's read, let's read to the end, verse 20, 30. And Jesus knew in himself that power had went, gone out of him, right? Verse 30. Knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? So he knew how the connection happened because it was by faith. Because it was by faith, he knew by the spirit of faith. But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? and all of that and you know all the story and jesus said daughter your faith has made you whole your faith not my touching you not my ministering to you not my anointing you not my pouring oil on you not my giving you a handkerchief we do all those things sometimes when we are led by the spirit as a physical contact to illustrate the faith by which you will receive so the power is not in the handkerchief the water don't be deceived by anything you have seen on tv the power is not there and when we make when we overuse those things it becomes idolatry the power remains in the word sent i'm still talking about faith second corinthians 4 verse 18 very important scripture very powerful scripture it said while we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal now hold on the beginning of that verse this is what it tells us it says we look at the things which are seen we look at the things which are seen in other words what you see is determined by how you look there are two types of vision there the first type of vision is the physical vision called sight what is seen but the second type of vision is called insight look you look to see just the way your eyes can be on something but you are not seeing it until you start looking at it are we together are we following just listen i'm going to show you something here. i'm going to show you how faith operates so there is insight and there is sight faith comes to create an insight in you so that as you look you already have an intention of what you want to see because these eyes you don't see you don't see with them huh these eyes are just windows they are an organ whatever you see with these eyes i hope you know if our medical science teaches us that the images that your eyes see are upside down is that true medical people yeah they're upside down it is your brain that interprets there is a nerve called the optic nerve it's connected to your brain it is that nerve that connects your brain and then your brain tells your eye what you are seeing so two people can look at one thing and see different things one person can look and see a human being the other person can look and see an anointed man one person can look and say this is my pastor the other person can look and say this is my prophet sent to my life in this season what you see is determined by how you look 
that's why it says we look not at the things which are seen we are surrounded by visible things but as we look we are not seeing these visible things as we look because we have set our heart by faith to see something that is not visible we now can see that which is invisible so what you see is the condition but as you look what you can see is the miracle after that condition what are you seeing tonight as you listen what are you seeing if all you are seeing is apostle just finish all this talk and pray or apostle just finish and come and touch me and i'll be healed that's what you have seen that your healing will come from a physical touch and that is because of how you look you were determined your intention was that based on physical touch that is how i get my miracle that's the reason why when jesus multiplied bread in john chapter 6 there were two disciples there one saw but one looked the person who saw was philip jesus asked him he said go and get food for these people so that they can eat philip said how can we get food to fill this multitude he said even if we buy 200 denarii worth of bread you know why he was seeing the visible and his judgment was based on what he can see but the bible says the things that we see are temporal in other words they are subject to change they are here today and gone tomorrow that you can be seated now and in a moment of time that condition you came with can escape your life you can be seated jobless now but between now and the end of this service a text message a text message which you cannot see is about to come into your phone and a job is coming for you but philip only solved the visible and he concluded is but andrew this is what andrew did andrew brought a child to jesus he said he said father hey, master there is a lad here with five loaves of bread and two fishes but what can this do let me show you that andrew already had expectation that jesus would perform that miracle he already knew that five loaves of bread cannot feed five thousand men aside women and children geologically it is calculated some believe that there were about 15 to twenty thousand people there five loaves of bread come on this and this this an adult you are talking about he knew physically speaking that those bread and fishes could not feed them but he didn't make his judgment based on what he saw what he was seeing was that with us these five loaves and two fishes will do nothing but in the hands of the master everything changes that's why he said master here is five loaves in other words i know you to do miracle but you need something to create it's true that the bible says that through faith we know that the earth were created by, by the worlds were created by the word of god so that the things that are were not made by things which are seen it's true that god did not use something visible to manufacture or create the earth but then there was a material he used that material is his word and god said so andrew knew that in your hands everything changes what you see tonight is based on how you look if what you are seeing is that god will visit you next year fine it doesn't matter the name of the man of god that prays for you you know that's the reason why most times when people come to me i don't always want to ask them the history of their condition because there is one clause i don't like hearing we have gone to several men of god i don't like hearing it you know why it can it has a way of affecting my faith and i realize that no matter how many doctors have worked on your case if you go to a new doctor he starts the cycle again he will even conduct the same test that the doctors conducted on you you know why because he cannot validate his diagnosis based on others he has to validate it based on his own diagnosis so if you like tell me how many men of god have prayed if you like tell me you collected mantle from rccg campground you fetch sand from canaan land. i don't care all i know is that the god i serve is the god of now that may be in yesterday but today is a new day and the bible says his mercies are new every morning 
what do you see tonight doesn't matter if the condition is 10 years 15 20 30 you've lived with it all your life maybe even before you came here the devil tried to manipulate you made the condition out of control but I want you to know that we serve a God of miracles we serve a God of miracles the Bible says in Genesis chapter 22 God spoke to Abraham he told Abraham take your son sacrifice him on the mountain I will show you and let me show you how Abraham walked by faith the Bible says in verse 5 when they got to the mountain he told the servants he went with he says stay here I and the lad will go yonder and worship and return again that was the first prophecy the Bible says we believe therefore we spoke unknown to even him Abraham he didn't know that he was already prophesying that Isaac will not die but he will come back with Isaac I God told him sacrifice Isaac kill Isaac but he told them I and the lad will go yonder and worship and return again first prophecy read on verse 6 and 7 Isaac now asked Abraham he said father look at the, the wood for the fire the fire is here everything the knife he said but where is the lamb Abraham told him he said the Lord God will provide is that how he puts it oh, something snapped in my, my hand my, my mind now next verse that's verse 7 aha uh -huh. verse 8 rather something just I just got a revelation now aha uh -huh. He said, my son, God will provide himself. Do you have it in King James? Let me check something. Please, quickly, if you have it in King James, we'll come, we'll come back to New King James. All right, go back, go back. He says, my God, God will provide, New King James, please. He said, God will provide, verse 8, verse 8, New King James, please. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Second time he spoke. Because when you speak by faith, you literally are prophesying. What, did he ha what happened to Ezekiel? The Bible says, And he carried me by the Spirit of the Lord, and took me and set me in a valley that was full of bones, and they were very dry. And he asked, Son of man, can this bone live? He says, You alone knows. And he said, prophesy to these bones. The Bible says in verse 4, it says, and as I prophesy, when you speak by faith, it is a prophecy. You don't have to, you don't need a prophet to speak every time. When you speak and declare utterances by faith, you are already prophesying and God is bounded to fulfilling his word. Because every time you speak by faith, it is the spirit of faith, which is the spirit of God speaking through you. For God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent of his word. Whenever you speak by faith, it, you, have, you have boxed God to a corner. And you have made him declare through you. And because you spoke by the principle of faith, God is bounded to fulfill his word. And I need to add, he is bounded to hastily fulfill his word. That's what he told Jeremiah. He said, you have seen well, for I am, I am watching over my word hastily. So it's not just that God will do it, but God will do it quickly. And then you know the whole story. The Bible says, God told him, don't touch the boy. Verse 14, and that's the last place. 13 rather. That's the last place. I want to show us something there and then we'll pray. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and did what? And did what? Remember where we are coming from? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He lifted his eyes and looked. What he was doing before now was he was seeing, but he wasn't looking. But this time around, he lifted his eyes and looked. And what happened? Behold, he saw a ram caught in the thicket. Question, was it that time that the ram appeared? No, the ram had always been there. But Abraham had not seen it because he was seeing until he began to look for we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen god is not going to do now what you are expecting god has already done it 
it is when you look by the eyes of faith that you see the finished works of Jesus I wish you caught that you are the Lord my healer he said and lifted up his eyes and looked and behind him was a ram caught in a ticket by its horns and Abraham went and took the ram and offered it for a burnt offering next verse that's the reason why Abraham named the place of that place Jehovah Jireh now we interpret Jehovah Jireh to mean the Lord God will provide but the truth is in the original Hebrew the meaning of Jehovah Jireh is the one who sees or the place of the one who sees for we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen the place of the one who see what happened there was that he decided to look from God's perspective last scripture and then we'll pray Psalms 107 verse 20 popular scripture and then we'll pray you sent your word and healed my disease you are the Lord by healing he sent his word and healed them and deliver them from their destructions look at this now look at this look at this he sent his word it is natural to speak a word because when you speak others are supposed to hear listen carefully listen listen please listen please listen please listen don't just hear listen please listen because many of you this is where your miracle is please listen words are spoken so that they can be heard isn't it hold on but the game changes with God the Bible says he sent his word the Bible didn't say he spoke his word that means he called the word gave the word an assignment and sent the word and the bible says the word went on that assignment to his people and did what the word healed them watch this even though they did not hear with their ears the word that was spoken but the word healed them even though they didn't hear it with their ears the reason is because you don't only hear with your ears every part of you can hear when God speaks you didn't catch it listen he sent his word and healed them the Bible didn't tell us what the word was isn't it that means they didn't hear the word how that you can be healed by something you didn't hear that you didn't hear it with your ears but it had effect on your life that means that words are not only powerful when they are spoken words can be sent it means i can come to your life now and your ears have no business with the word i'm sending because the condition is not with your ears maybe the condition is with your finance i can come to you not saying anything but your finance will hear what your ears cannot hear and your finance overnight turns into abundance because before God you don't only hear words you don't need to hear it some of you are here listening to me now but the demons behind your condition are checking out of your life now why I didn't cast any demon out by the words but they can hear words that are in unspeakable this is what faith really is that you can say what is not uttered didn't the bible say that the holy spirit prays for us with words that cannot be uttered but it is prayer he sent his word and healed them matthew chapter 8 what did the centurion tell jesus 
he met Jesus he said my servant he is sick and Jesus you know was going to his house the Bible says the man sent to Jesus and told him he said please you don't I am not worthy for you to come he said but speak the word only and my servant the servant was not with Jesus the servant did not hear what Jesus said the servant didn't even know that Jesus was going to say it the servant was expecting Jesus to come physically but the Bible says Jesus said go your servant leaves and when the man went back and inquired the Bible says it was at the same hour the servant didn't hear the word spoken but words that were not spoken had effect that means that as I stand under the anointing it's not just my mouth that is talking every part of me may be talking but it will be talking to the area of your life that is concerned so look at that testimony I prayed for her I only knew she was paralyzed in her left side I didn't know there was diabetes but the diabetes was hearing healing that was not spoken to it Let me prophesy with one song. Dry bones shall rise again. Dry bones. Dry bones shall rise again. Dry bones shall rise again. In your life, dry bones shall live again. The dry bones can be anything that looks like a condition. Lord Jehovah is able to do all things. He's able to do all things. So I don't need to address with my mouth your condition. But as I'm speaking right now under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, every challenge you came with, including the one you are not aware of, including the accident that satan planned tomorrow by 10 a.m but as i can be here speaking under this anointing i can send a word that you didn't hear but your tomorrow can hear and that accident is plotted out why he sent his word the people said they were sick unknown to them they were demons but when the word came he healed them and sought demonic oppression and took it off that's how powerful it is that's why you don't need hands to be laid on you that's why you don't even need the man of God to make sure your case or your name because when you come in the presence of God it's an atmosphere where God is speaking and your ear must not hear before your condition changes you sent your word and healed my disease You are the Lord, my Listen to this. Please sit down. Listen to this. That same chapter, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 8, from verse 16 and 17, that they brought the evening. When the evening had come, they brought all the sick to Jesus. And he casted them out by his word. That's Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. The Bible says he healed them and casted out demons by a word, right? And healed all who were sick. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Now the Bible didn't tell us the word that Jesus spoke that healed them and took the demons out. But the Bible says he casted out demons and healed the sick by a word because that word doesn't have to be spoken to be effective it is the living and eternal word of god that liveth and abideth forever and how many of you are ready for a change tonight how many of you are ready to see god touch you now just sit down i want to minister to some people quickly and then after that we are going to rise and i'll pray for the sick and then there's going to be an outbreak of the power of God. Some of you came here not sick, but your spiritual life is in need of fresh fire. Some of you came here because you are in need of an anointing. You don't even know that what you need is an anointing, is a grace. 
but God is able to reach out to everyone here. Can we pray for just one minute as you are seated? Can you just pray? If you can, pray in the spirit. Just for one minute, just pray. Lord, send my word. God is sending a word to somebody. God is sending a word to somebody. You sent your word and heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Hallelujah. Somewhere from this point within the course of the ministration, God showed me a vision of something that will happen. And I saw this vision two days ago while I was praying. I saw somebody here, I saw your feet vibrating, your feet, your both feet. And I saw the fire of God come on you. And God said, is reawakening an evangelical and an evangelistic anointing in your life it will happen somewhere while i'm ministering specifically i'm seeing a man but there may be more people with that grace an evangelistic anointing the calling of an evangelist is on your life and you will feel the fire of god literally what i'm saying is going to be very intense you will literally scream and shout i don't know when but it will happen and it may not just happen to one person that's going to be your own impartation but i want to pray for two sets of people before we rise and then pray for the sick i just want you to believe god tonight because god is going to do great things please if you came here with a medical report a condition that has a medical report especially if you came with the medical report please stand If you came sick or you came with somebody who is sick and there is even a medical report to our test could you stand I want to pray for you briefly if possible stand with the report and then I'm going to pray for those who struggle to sleep you cannot sleep you have problems with sleeping don't stand yet those ones with sleep don't stand. I'll pray for them quickly. My sister, please come. If, if you came with the medical reports, especially if there is a report, come with it. Come with it. You know, when I stand there and just pray generally, and people come out and they are healed, it's easy for some of us to doubt that that's that looks too easy or too good to be true but when you minister to them one by one especially with conditions that are proven medically then you know it has to be the power of god any other person a condition and you have the report with you or you came with somebody and the report is with that person please don't come out at random you brought the medical reports and you are believing God for healing. Come with it. Now, if you have problems with sleeping, you can't sleep, or you struggle to sleep, or you probably, or you probably, or just let her wait. Let her wait. She doesn't have the report. No problem. Just wait. I feel God telling me to attend to you. Just just stand. But you have the report, ma. There's a report with you. Okay, a card. Okay, so find out what is wrong. Uh, find out what is wrong with two of them. Now, if you know you have problems with sleep, you struggle to sleep at night, insomnia, you just know you have difficulties with your sleep, especially if you're already taking tablets or drugs for that. Can you stand? Please stand. Don't be ashamed. Today God will heal you. You are the Lord. 
that he led me. Those people with sleep disorders, let them come and stand here. You are the Lord. Sleep disorders, just come stand here. My healer. You sent your word. And he. Tonight, God is going to do a lot here. There's somebody with a problem around one of your hips. I've not started praying for the sick, but I'm seeing a problem with one of your hips. And it's affecting your waist. God is healing you right now as I'm talking. Right now, God is healing you. You have a problem with one of your hips. I think you literally can feel pain and it's affecting your waist. One of your hips. God is healing you now, now, as I'm talking now. The power of God is healing you now. That pain is going. In the glory. Yes, God. What's, what's, let me hear her first. Let me, what's her case? Sir, yes. Mrs. Sekem, Mrs. Sekem. Uh, Mrs. who? Sekem. Okay. So, her brother was diagnosed of cancer. And cancer. she was diagnosed with barrenness. Okay. That she cannot be able to conceive. Okay. As at last year. Okay. Yes. Sir. Is it a growth or something? They just told you, you will not be able to conceive. That devil is a liar. Come here. Let's start with you. Let's start with the difficult case. So that that migraine you came with. I think we, you heard the testimony of cancer, right? Yes, sir. Uh huh. They told you last year, medically proven, doctors told you you will not be able to conceive. Why? Did they give you the reason? Did they give any reason? No, just find out from her and get to know. All of you have problem with sleep. You can't sleep. Eh? Okay, just stand in a single file. Please arrange them. You will sleep. Uh, would you want to sleep here and now? If you don't want to sleep here and now, step aside but if you want God to so heal you that you will sleep now remain here if you don't want to sleep here step aside let's start with the difficult cases today yeah okay you don't want to sleep then I'll not minister to you <laughs> maybe anytime you sleep you you don't like the picture of yourself <laughs> Oh, there's glory in this place. Okay, okay, sir. Yes. She was operated sapingetomy, which is removal of this fallopian tube. Huh? What's that? Sapingetomy. That's okay. removal of the fallopian tube. Ah, fallopian tubes yes, were sir. removed. Yes, sir. How many of you believe God is going to do a creative miracle now? <laughs> Step aside first. Let me minister. Just stand. After tonight, I want you to go for scan. All right? Seven days from now. What they removed has grown back. Huh? <laughs> hey. Lord Jesus, thank you. I'm not ministering to her. I'm just standing. Okay, let me minister to her. Step aside, everybody. Just stand. You, you stand. Just stand. You stand behind. Watch. I'm going to minister to her father and I pray in the name of Jesus recreate new brand new fallopian tubes and let every medical report become a lie in the name of Jesus no, no just just my hand. just put your hand put your hand there one hand just just follow me Father, recreate brand new fallopian tubes. Under the glory, let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. In 
the glory and the power I see miracles signs and wonders you step behind a little just be there to catch her just step behind I'm doing something this is not gymnastic oh. I'm doing something brand new fallopian tubes Oh. What's the case? She's diagnosed of hepatitis B. She's diagnosed of hepatitis B. She's diagnosed of hepatitis B for over four years. Do you want to be healed? Do you believe you'll be healed? God has done other things for you, but do you believe God will heal you? Okay. Put some of my water on the glass. And bring it for her. This lady, God is still working on her. Literally. There's an angel standing by her. And Father, in the name of Jesus, let the scan confirm that her fallopian tubes have been recreated. To the shock of the doctors and to the glory of your name. Amen. Who did she come with? Did she come with anybody? You came with her? How long has she been married? Come. I see miracle. So you guys, do you want to sleep? Huh? You want to sleep today? I'm saying some of you will sleep now. Yes, now. Huh? Four years. She's been married for four years. Yes, okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, restore her, recreate the fallopian tubes, and by this time next year, twins. And by October 2023, another set of twins. Let it be restored. In the name of Jesus. Wait, step aside. Let me pray for this man. I don't know, but God is saying I should pray for him. Just stand. Please stand. Oh. God is doing something today. Lord. I receive that oppression comes to an end out of him in the name of Jesus it's over you are free sir you are free huh? the oppression is broken you hear what I said your oppression is good broken. Go back. I may prophesy to you. So come. Father, let this communicate your divine power. I rebuke that devil of hepatitis. And I declare that it goes and never returns. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Drink it. Just drink it. Can I pray for you guys? Sleep? For how long? Huh? For how long? Huh? Two weeks. You come, step forward. Wait. You will sleep now. It's okay, it's okay. Just look at me. Look at me. Okay? Just, I have beautiful eyes. Look at it. Just keep looking at me, okay? Father, let her sleep. Shh. Wait. 
Father, I restore that sleep now. In the name of Jesus. Cover her. She's sleeping. When she wakes up, let me know. Can I pray for you guys? Or you don't want? Let's go. There, there, there's no time. We have cases to attend to. Huh? Come, madam, come. You said what? Lost please, please shift so that we can avoid you. My Since you lost your husband, okay, okay, you are Jessica's mom. Yes. Wow, and you've not been able to sleep, it's my husband. and it has affected your health as well. Yes. Okay, mommy, your time for healing has come. Hold my hand, Father. Your word says he giveth his beloved sleep. I send the power of God right now. And I break this infirmity. I break this infirmity. Be healed. now no more headache no, it's gone it. completely yes. all right that's another sign okay just come one by one i'll touch you and i'll pray for you mommy when you go back today huh please eat before you go to bed because you'll sleep your longest sleep this night who did you come with did you come with somebody where is jessica i want you to confirm okay she will wake up late tomorrow morning you heard what I said? I have because she will sleep. Hold my hand. Father, let this oppression go. In the name of Jesus, sleep. Father, let her sleep. And let sleeplessness die. In the name of Jesus. You don't want to disturb them, right? All right. Okay, you come. Let me just pray for you. Can we pray for the sick now? Yes, I, I feel that fire now. Let's come. Who did you come with? Huh? Your elder sister. Where is she? Wait. How do you feel? Huh? Better. Huh? Feel better. Are you feeling sleepy as well? You still feel like sleeping now? <laughs> she said not now. <laughs> and she's staggering. It's over. Father, in the name of Jesus, it comes to an end. God is taking away those headaches now. Did you hear what I said? God is taking away those headaches. In the name of Jesus. Come, let me pray for you. Let me just touch you and that will be it. Father, let this oppression break. In the name of Jesus. Let this oppression break. In the name of Jesus. Come. Can we all stand?
Now this is what you do tonight. It's over. You go and sleep. All these people I prayed for, I need somebody to check them out this night. They will sleep like they have never slept. This is what you will do for me. If you are sick, I want you to put one hand where the infirmity is. You can tell the infirmity maybe by the symptoms, a pain somewhere in your body. But if, if it's just your entire body or you don't know where it is and you are sick, just put your right hand on your head. If it is your entire body or you don't know where the problem is but you know you are sick, put your right hand on your head. But if you can identify the part of your body that is sick, put your right hand there. And then if it is around your legs or is at the delicate area, just put your right hand on your chest. Please follow the instructions clearly. If it is all over your body or you don't know where the sickness is but you know you are sick, put your right hand on your head. But if you can identify where the sickness is, put your right hand where that sickness is in your body. If the sickness is around your legs or at a delicate part of your body, put your right hand on your chest. I'm about to pray. I hope we heard that. I'm about to pray. We'll pray and then we'll take testimonies. And then I want to prophesy a particular miracle tonight. How many of you are ready to receive it? I prayed to God and I told God, just so that he can be glorified to do a miracle money in this place. I told God, this one God didn't tell me, I told God to do it here. And God will do it here and now. Because I need that miracle to prophesy over your finances. Many of you are here and your money is tied somewhere. Not just physically alone, but spiritually. Can we pray for the sick now? All right. Father, thank you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Please say a big amen. In the name of Jesus. I take authority over the spirit of infirmity. I take authority over disease. I take authority over affliction of all sorts. And in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of their bodies. 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 Of their bodies. In the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet that you are healed now. I command every pain to go now. I command every pain to go now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Every eye condition be healed now. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Every condition with your respiratory tract. From your nose down to your lungs. The power of God heals you right now. In the name of Jesus, I come against infection of any kind. Infection of any kind in whatever part of your body. I command those my bacteria to die now. I command those microorganisms to die now. And I declare to those infections, be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Every condition around your mouth, there is somebody here, you have mouth sores. Mouth sores, mouth sores, mouth sores. You have mouth sores. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus. I see a few tooth ache and tooth conditions. Right now, be healed in the name of Jesus. And where a tooth is missing, I declare, let a tooth be created there now. I declare a creative miracle of a tooth now in the name of Jesus I command every condition with your limbs your hands and your feet every condition whether pains or numbness dislocation of whatever kind I declare be healed now be healed now be healed now be healed now I speak to every dislocation Bone, come to its bone now. 
I said, bone come to its bone now. Bone come to its bone now. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody with stomach upset right now. You just keep hearing noise around your stomach. I don't know whether it's diarrhea or whatever it is. As I speak right now, the power of God is healing you. That noise stops now. Those movements around your stomach stops now. And I declare every condition with the abdomen be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Lower or upper abdominal pain be healed now. Be healed now. Let that devil come out of your abdomen now. In the name of Jesus. God is still asking me to pray against pain. Any kind of pain whatsoever. Whether mild pain, dull pain, excruciating pain, severe pain. I declare be healed now. Pain be gone now. In the name of Jesus. I'm still praying. I come against kidney infection. Kidney infection. Infection around your, uni your urinary tract. Problems with your bladder. Problems with your urination. You, you, you have problems urinating. You have problems urinating. As I'm talking right now, the power of God is upon you. And I decree and declare, be healed now. Be healed now. The power of God is touching people. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Kidney infection. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Chronic kidney disease. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Kidney stones. Be gone now. In the name of Jesus. The power of God is on people right now. As I'm talking. God is healing people. God is setting them free. Every condition with your liver, your liver, your liver, your liver, your liver. I speak life to that liver now. You know because there are pains around your right side. I speak life to that liver now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. I'm still praying. still praying this is a condition God is just telling me right now you feel pains but they, they are like inside your bones you feel the pains like inside your bones or you feel weaknesses in your bones or your joints put your hand on your head right now I send the word of deliverance and healing to you and I command that oppression to leave your body now I declare be healed now bones be healed now in the name of Jesus every psychological issue whether as a result of stress or as a result of insanity in the name that is above every other name I command that demon to let you go now I declare and declare let the spell be broken now I command that spell to be broken now. Let that spell be broken now. Insanity, I cast you out now. I cast you out now. In the name of Jesus. The Bible declares he shall keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on him. Because he trusts in him. I decree and declare the peace of God on your mind. I speak over your brain. I speak over your spinal cord. I speak over your nervous system. And I decree and declare the life and the power of God comes upon you right now. Let the chains of darkness be broken now. I said let the chains of darkness be broken now. Let those chains be broken now. I break those chains 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 now. Be broken 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 now. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. One, two, three. Let every affliction go. 
every oppression go, 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 go. Let the spell be broken. I command those evil spirits to go now. Go now. Go now. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in Jesus. There is power in Jesus. to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now open your eyes. In one minute, I'm still ministering. But in one minute, I want you to check yourself. If you know you had an infirmity you came with, I want you to check yourself. There must be a way by which we will know the condition has gone. For some of you, you just feel sick all over. But check right now, you can feel strong. You can feel strength. You can feel life. If you know God has healed you or the condition has reduced, I want you to walk to the front quickly so that we can take your testimonies. Please keep checking yourself. Some of you, as you check, that's when the healing will come. Who is Christopher? Christopher, Christopher. I hear a name, Christopher. Christopher. If you are connected to that name, please come. And I'm also hearing Ifine. Please, if you are connected to that name, just come. I want to pray for you. Don't come out at random. Maybe you come and stand at the right. If you know God has healed you, you check yourself right now. Please come out quickly. Let's get your testimonies. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every, to break every, to break every chain. Break every chain. Keep checking yourself. If you know God has healed you or the, the condition has reduced or dissipated, please come out quickly. Break every So we can perfect it. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. God is asking me to pray this. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke cancer. 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 There are people with growths here. But there's somebody God is showing me. Your mom has a cancerous situation. Your mom has a cancerous situation right now i send the word of the lord to her and i declare that right now she is healed completely Amen. cancer dies and lives their life forever Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. if you are such a person with that your mom please go out quickly check go out make a call find out and if you know you came in here with growths check your body right now god is dissolving growths 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 growth growth there is a young man you have this like pardon me please uh, this may not this may sound offensive but i'm sorry i don't know this is like a growth or something or like a swelling It's around your private part you are a young man It's around your private area and god is healing you and as i see you, you are like dark in complexion god is healing you now permit me for that just go out and check. It's like a swelling or a growth around your private organ. God is healing you. I've seen somebody with growth around um, your armpit, what we call armpit. And right now, that person is feeling heat. That's the growth disappearing now. I dare you to go out and check. Go out and check. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we wave our hands and give him praise? Look at the testimonies and they are coming. A lot of people are still healed. If you know God has healed you 
or the healing has begun, I want you to come out and check. Now listen, those two conditions I mentioned before we started to minister, those two conditions I mentioned, if you are with that and you know God has healed you, please come out. I mentioned something around the heart, right? The, the chest, the heart condition. And then your spine down to your waist. Please, if you know you are the one and God has healed you, come out quickly. Let's perfect it and get your testimony very quickly. Yes, sir. It's Christopher. Sir. Christopher, can I talk to you? Please stand here. Where are you from? From this state, sir. Huh? From this state. From this state. Yes, sir. Are you a student? Yes, sir. You are a student? Yes, sir. Can I talk to you? Yes, sir. Brother, God has visited you and your family. God has visited. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm just seeing stuff, but this may be wrong or, or right. It's just a question, okay? Um, but I'm seeing between two to three hundred level. I'm a final year student, sir. You are a final year, okay? I said it was just a question, okay? Do you have a sibling in this school? You are, you are in Unimed, right? Yes, sir. You have a sibling there? A family relative? Do you have a family relative? No. No, sir. No. Okay. God is visiting you and your family. Father, in the name of Jesus, hold my hand. Lord, I send a word to him and his family right now. And I declare that every oppression of darkness comes to an end in this family. Today, let light shine in the name of Jesus. And the affliction is over. The affliction is over. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on you. And I declare upon your academics that you will triumph. That's what they said. I, the Lord said I should tell you. You will triumph academically. Father, let it be so. In the name of Jesus. Amen. She's yes. connected to somebody. Christopher. Who is Christopher? Brother. Huh? My younger brother. Is your younger brother. Huh? Our last born. Your last born. Yes. Where is he? India. Huh? India. India. Is he school in there? Yes. Okay. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we send a word of deliverance to Christopher. You know what God is showing me? I just keep seeing his head. I don't know what the devil is trying to do. But it looks like what the devil is trying to do, he will lose his mind or something. I see him battling with mental issues. Alright? But God is giving him rest and peace of mind. Amen. In the name of Jesus. How long has he been there? Just close to a year now. Just a year he traveled there. Yes. I see the Lord doing something around his head that's his mind and God is speaking peace to his mind amen. in the name of Jesus amen. amen and amen it's done it's done send the word to him huh send the word to him he finds he find we're still taking the testimonies right can we just sit down quickly just briefly we're, we're going to stand and pray again Some of you still need to check yourself. God is healing people. Especially with the growth. Especially with the growth. Especially with the growth. Check yourself quickly. And come, let's perfect the healing. In the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hey, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain to break every to break every to break every chain, break every chain, break every break every chain, break every chain. Sing, there is power. There is power. Give the name of Jesus. Give the name of Jesus. 
Testimony, yeah, yes, we'll take we we'll take that online. Yes, I'm online. coming. We'll take that. You are Victor. I'm hearing two names. All right. I'm hearing Victor, and I'm hearing Yusuf. The names are connected. Victor, Yusuf. Victor, Yusuf. Please, if you know you are connected to that, rush forward quickly. The names are connected. That means it's either both your names. Or one is your name and one belongs to somebody related to you. Victor and Yusuf. Victor and Yusuf. Victor. Huh? Celebrate God for that. Victor, Yusuf. Let me hear the online testimony, please. Yes, Bishop. Okay. Uh, you attend to that. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Sir testimony was having a severe headache since yesterday immediately after apostle was praying i feel like a cool water is poured on my head yeah. hallelujah i'm healed from where who is from there who is the, where is the person from i believe from abuja sir from okay from abuja yes can we celebrate god for that <laughs> far away if god can touch people there are some of you here with relatives who are sick right now and in your heart you are standing in for them i see the lord healing them right now and this miracle is a confirmation can we celebrate god for that sir yes Yusuf is our father no it's not all these people he's a male i'm looking for okay Just victor yusuf this is victor you are victor he's supposed to come with a friend called yusuf yusuf yes god <laughs> uh -huh. it's well yes sir huh? it's yusuf you are Yusuf. Yes, sir. Is there any Victor around your family? No, Victor. I'll pray for you, but I've gotten the person I'm looking for. No, you shouldn't have sent them away. I would have still prayed for them. It's all right. God bless you wherever you are, okay? I stretch my hand and I declare that the Lord will visit you and your family. In Jesus' name. You are Victor. You were supposed to come with a friend, Yusuf. What happened that he couldn't come? I don't know, sir. You know, sometimes when they tell you to come for program, and you refuse to come. That's the day God meant, means to visit you. Amen. Yusuf, right? Is it dark in complexion? Yes, sir. Like you? Yes, sir. Dark. That's what I'm seeing. We need to pray for him because I'm seeing an attack of the enemy around his life. Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. I'm seeing an attack of the enemy around his life. And I'm seeing him moving into distress and depression. I'm seeing him just like everything is scattering. Everything yes. is just collapsing around yes, right now, including his finance. Yes, Wait. I wish he was here. I wanted to talk because I'm seeing the name of a bank and I'm seeing an account number, but you will not be able to confirm it if I call it out. All right. God, God is showing me that as a proof. You know one thing with the prophetic is God can show you one thing and you think that's all that there is until you keep looking. That's why I taught you about looking. Huh? But in the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I stretch my hands towards you as a point of contact for your friend and I speak deliverance for Yusuf right now. In the name of Jesus. And for you, may the Lord visit you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. He's well. Go and tell him, God is visiting him. God will show him mercy. And in 72 days, uh, sorry, 72 hours, huh? there's going to be a miracle in his life. Did you hear what I said? In 72 hours, God will do a major miracle in his life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Can we put our hands together and give God praise? Let's hear. Hallelujah. 
Apostle, this yes. is Jeffrey Aminu. She has been having asthmatic attack since 2015. Again, asthmatic attack. Yes, sir. All right. Yes. Since 2015, but now she can breathe in and out fine. She's healed of that attack. Put the mic close to her nose. Breathe. Let's hear. Breathe well. You can breathe well now. Yeah. Okay. Just breathe the way you used to breathe with the asthma. Let's hear. I know it's not there, but just imitate the way you used to breathe when you had the asthma. Before, if I'm breathing uh, like this, someone close to me, you would think like I'm snoring and while I'm... Do it, for example, now let's I'm hear. Better now. Do it, let's hear. Do an example. <laughs> like, <laughs> she didn't understand. It's well, from two, since 2015. Yes, sir. And you are okay now. You are fine. As I came in today, uh, I was having the breathing. I can't... Okay, as you came in, you began to have signs of the attack. Yes, since last two weeks, but as you pray today, you are fine completely. Yeah, fine Can we give God praise? <laughs> it's over forever in the name of Jesus. Next, quickly. Apostle, this is Jennifer Ishaya. Yes. She has been having dry cough since last Sunday. Dry cough since last Sunday. And yeah. severe headache. All right. But after you made those declarations, she's now healed. Dry cough is over. Her throat is completely. Fine. Can we give God praise? Come, my dear. Dry cough. I have a sharp pain at the side of my brain. When you cough, you feel yes, pain feel it at the right, right, right side, side of your head. Yes, and a very severe headache. Now, even when I walk, I feel pain inside my head. But it's no more. My throat is like free. Completely I'm gone. Completely Hold my gone. hand perfected in the name of jesus amen never to return in jesus name amen you are healed my dear dx please walk on that mic because they're using it apostle this yes, is sir. sister yaga nasani yes sir. she have been having side pain of her kidney two side pain side pain yes sir and it's a kidney infection yes like sir. a kidney lasted, problem it lasted over a year but now she's healed how did you know it was a kidney issue have you gone to the hospital I've ever went to the hospital and they diagnosed me of kidney infection. Okay, you went to the hospital and they diagnosed you of kidney infection. Yes, sir. God is still healing people as I'm talking right now. I see the Spirit of God hovering over this place like a cloud. God is still touching people. Amen. And now the pains are not there. Yes, sir. For one year. Yes, sir. Come, it's perfected in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, the pain goes and never returns in the name of Jesus. Next, quickly. Let's hear that. This is Mrs. Falmat Ishakum Shelia. She has been having stomach upset. Oh, doctor, yes. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Since she came into Meduguri, she has been having stomach upset for over five days. But now she's now free from that pain, stomach pain, and then severe headache is gone. Completely. Completely gone. Completely. Yes, sir. It's over forever. In Jesus' name. God bless you, man. Yes, next, sir. Hallelujah. This is Ladi Mohammed. She came in here with headache, but now she's healed of completely that. Completely healed. Completely healed. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, just go ahead. God is talking to me. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, I'm sir, getting something. This is Miriam Kwali Gazama. Heal yes. of toothache for two weeks. Toothache? Yes, sir. What side? What side? She's still literally under the anointing. Okay, you feel the pains around here. There's no pain like toothache. Huh? Toxic that lady, week. that lady living, call her. I want to prophesy to her. Uh, call her. Okay, just stand and look at me from there. Should I talk to you before you go? Or you just go? Huh? All right, call. I hope it's somebody I, I don't know or I know. Don't say it's a strategy or no. She was just walking out and then the Spirit of God said, I need to prophesy. And how are you feeling now? I'm okay now. Completely. Yes, sir. Was it that they removed the teeth or the tooth? Or, okay, no. just toothache. Yes, sir. Gone forever in the name of Jesus. It's Man. well with you. Next, sir, quickly. Sir, this is Afiniki Adamu, healed of toothache for two months. Toothache for two months? Yes, sir. What part? What side? Okay, both sides. Yes, sir. Even there is hole. They said they will remove it in TH, but I refuse. And now the pains are gone? Yes, sir. Yes. Come. Let's, let's, let's allow God to do the miracle complete. There were holes. Which one? The, okay, upper part. All right. Could you, do you experience problem with chewing? 
then pain but it's gone now i want to pray something um and i need you to check it sir do we have a dentist here or a dental nurse i want to pray that the hole will be filled completely and we'll check it here how many of you believe for that i like the way you just sit down and you're watching that's that's a very good posture father in the name of jesus as the pains have gone i command that the tooth or the teeth will be filled up in the name of jesus be filled up be filled up be filled up in the name of jesus now you you literally somebody could see it if they, they were holes i need somebody to check this out now who can help us check just take her outside and check it check whether you will find the holes there and come back and give me the testimony yes go ahead sir. okay sir at the course of the ministration you talked about somebody suffering from heartache heart heart problem heart okay severe back pain disappeared back pain yes, sir. you were the one no sir my own is severe back pain severe back, back pain for almost a year. come for how long almost a year, almost a year. Yes, does it go down to your waist so that uh, one of my cord has been huh? I, I can't hear her. You, you said what? I even went and go. I went for an x-ray. They saw that one of my cord is dislocated. One of your what? My vertebral cord. Column is dislocated. Yes, sir. And so you've had that pain for one year. Yes, sir. Come, Kai. This is a major miracle. This will be either a herniated disc or something. One of your bones in your vertebra was dislocated. Now, what couldn't you do? When you had that condition, you can't uh, do it now. Let's see. Bend again. Yes? You can bend like this. So the pain is no longer there. Vertigra column dislocated, healed by the power of God after one year. And that's how you celebrate God. That's not just a healing, that's a miracle. Huh? Now, I wish you had an x-ray did you take an x-ray when you went for diagnosis you have the x-ray it showed it's out I want you to go tomorrow take another x-ray huh? come back with the two x-rays this Sunday how many of you would like to come and witness the miracle so you don't miss next Sunday huh? bring it back and let's put the devil to shame father we perfect it in the name of Jesus completely healed completely restored help her in the name of jesus yes okay sir this is nora mikailu yes sir heartache and, and headache disappeared at the course of the ministration heart pain pain around the chest yes sir and headache yes sir. disappeared completely yes, sir. huh apart from that daddy when i came in i didn't actually came in with any request i was telling god i say i i didn't came here with Okay, you didn't. You trust. didn't. You, you had the condition, but you were not hoping God will heal yes, you, sir, I am not and you are healed completely. Yes, sir. It's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Hold on, God is. Can I just walk? There's an anointing now, and God is telling me to prophesy healing for blood conditions. That's why I'm walking like this. Please stretch your two hands before you, everybody. God is telling me to prophesy for blood conditions and in the name of Jesus anyone that came with a blood condition the power of God comes upon you now and you are healed completely blood disease of whatever kind be healed now be healed now let genotypes be changed let genotypes be changed let genotypes be changed HIV go HIV go HIV go HIV go mm. Oh the presence of God is so strong yeah. Yes one more and then we'll pray Come this is your word Stand here The word of the Lord to you God says Don't be afraid What he has started He will finish Did you hear that? It will make sense to you when you look at your life. Huh? But that's the word of the Lord to you. What he has started, he will finish. The Bible says he that has begun a good work in you. He's able to do what? 
complete it. As I prophesy to her, I'm prophesying to somebody here who is at the middle of a, an, a, a condition, middle of an issue. You feel like you will not finish it, whether it's about your ministry, your business, your academics. God, what God said, whatever he has started, he will finish. Whatever he has started, he will complete. And I release the finisher's grace upon you. In the name of Jesus. Go, it's over. Hmm? It's done. Can we celebrate God? Okay. Sir. Yes. Sir, this is Mrs. Grace Miracle. She yes. has been suffering from hip and waist pain for the past two weeks. Hip and waist pain. For about the cost of the ministration, she just received her healing. Completely. Yes, sir. Completely. Hip and waist pain. Yes, sir. You remember I mentioned about a problem with the hip that is affecting the waist. And the pain is gone. Yes, sir. Can you walk, mommy? Let's see. We will know if the pain is still there. Look at that. Can we give God praise? Hold my hand, man. Just hold my hand. It's perfected in the name of Jesus. And I release the healing anointing into your life. As God has healed you, you will heal others. Please help her. That's the grace. Strong healing anointing. Begin to manifest now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Okay, sir, this is from Maxwell. For the past two weeks, he has been suffering from waist and spinal cord pain. Waist pain. I don't know why God is healing waist pain today. But ever since you minister, he received his healing and the pain disappeared. Completely. Completely, sir. How about pain around your joints? Huh? Did you have pain around your joints? Chest. Okay, chest. Yes. And they said it's ulcer, but the pain's left. You, the pain is gone. Yes, sir. So go back and eat the food you cannot eat perfected in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we give God praise? Yes. So this is Sister Lizzie suffering from toothache, but ever since you minister, she received her healing and the pain disappeared. Completely. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, is perfected. In Jesus' name. I see the Lord touching a lady around your lower abdomen. Around your lower abdomen. And the lady I'm seeing, well, it may happen to many people, but the lady I'm seeing particularly, you are kind of light skin. And, uh, but this is not to embarrass you, okay? But you, your abdomen is like bulgy. Your abdomen is bulgy. And you are somehow light skin. I see God touching you around your ab lower abdomen, and God is healing you. Specifically, it looks like you are wearing a skirt. Who is that person? Right now, I sense it. God is healing you. You are a lady. You are like light skin. And your abdomen is somehow bulgy. But God is healing you. There is a pain around your lower abdomen. God is touching you right now. It may occur to many people. But this particular lady, you are putting on a skirt. A skirt. A skirt. A skirt. Confirm that person quickly. God is healing you right now as I'm talking. In the name of Jesus. Chains are falling down now. I just heard that. Chains are falling down now. Chains are falling down now. Chains are falling down. Chains are falling down. Please stand up. I want to pray. This prayer is for a few people. It's going to be a deliverance prayer. Please lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hand right now. Whoever is under any oppression, any oppression at all, that the chains of darkness have held down. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke those spirits. I rebuke those spirits. I displace those spirits right now. And I command the fire of God to burn those chains off now. Let those chains be burnt off now. Let those chains be burnt off now. Let those chains be broken now. Now in the name of Jesus. I command every demonic manipulation. Every demonic oppression over your life. In the name of Jesus. Be gone now. Be gone. Be gone. Be gone. Be gone. Be gone, be gone. Break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's the power of God. Break, break, break. 
break, 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 break. Come out of them. Come out of them now. 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 Please lift your hands. I'm still ministering. God just shifted it now. I sense a deliverance anointing. You are going bring the lady that you will hear a loud shout from. A loud shout. In the name of Jesus, that oppression over your life and your family is broken now. I arrest those spirit. Help. Yes, that's it. Give me randomly. Lift your hands. I'm still praying. I feel deliverance anointing here now. Just bring her. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Anyone here that was fired any kind of arrow from the pit of hell. Any object from the kingdom of darkness that was projected towards you without true dreams or physically in the name of jesus i release the fire of god right now i release the fire of god right now and let that arrow return back to the sender let that arrow return back to the sender let the weapons of hell vanish from your life be free now be free now be free now be free now That's it. That's the power of God. That's it. That's it. There is a young man now. I'm seeing you like dark in complexion. Please help him. Because I literally see him. He will start running. What is happening upon your life right now is the anointing is coming on you and that oppression over you and your family is broken. God said stagnation is over. And from today, the grace of speed is released. Please help the young man when you see him. The grace for speed is released. You will literally begin to run now. That's what I'm saying. Let that hold of stagnation be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken. Just help him and bring him if you see him. Be broken now. Be broken now. I'm still praying. Please lift your hands. If you are not tired, please lift your hands. I've not, I've not gotten the young man, but when you see him, just I, just I just saw somebody shouting and running. That oppression is breaking right now. When you get him, please hold him and just bring him. I need to prophesy to him. It's for his family. This lady, in the name of Jesus, I command those hosts of demons to let you go right now. You spirits from the pit of hell, out of her now. Out of her in the name of Jesus. Anyone that is under any form of witchcraft or a spell was casted over you, lift your hands and pray. The power of God will find you now. Father, anyone under witchcraft oppression, it was as a result of witchcraft that you were manipulated. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood and I declare that that affliction comes to an end. That oppression is broken. I arrest, I arrest the spirit of witchcraft. I arrest the spirit of witchcraft at the count of seven out of their lives forever. One, two, three, four, five, Six and now seven out of their lives, out of their lives, out of their lives. I arrest the powers of witchcraft. I arrest you. I arrest you. Just bring them out. I arrest you. I send that arrow back to the sender. Back to the sender. If you can't.
and just pray for 30 seconds. God is doing a lot of things. Chains are breaking. Yokes are breaking now. Father, let there be such a weight of the anointing, a weight of your glory in this place. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Chains break now. Oppressions break. Yokes be destroyed. Yokes be destroyed. Yokes be destroyed. Yokes be destroyed. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh. Yahweh. Please lift your hands. I'm still praying. I'm seeing fire, but it's moving in cycles and it's moving all across this hall. Lift your hands. I want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare by the ministry of fire, Father, anyone who is under any kind of oppression anyone who is under any kind of torment by the ministry of fire i declare their liberation now i declare by their liberation now by that fire by that fire rako sekete barakatoi de la brando si pratala la paro si ke rebete rosco podia pata matala ko siempre que te fire fire and I declare deliverance now. There's a lady I'm seeing. I'm still praying. I hope you don't mind. It's miracle service, okay? Let's just allow God to do all the work he will do tonight. Many of you don't even know what's happening. Many of you are here lifting your hands and angels are visiting your village as I'm talking now. Watch this night, you will have dreams, strange dreams that will confirm family. You are Barando Kotaparia Kata. I feel that anointing. I'm about to pray. Anyone that is under any form of ancestral yoke, family yoke, generational patterns, by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic, let those patterns be broken now. Let those yokes be broken now. I set you free now. I set you free now. By fire, by fire. I set you free now. I set help them. I set you free now. Aha. Uh -huh. That's it. 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 Generational curses be broken. Generational bondages be broken. Generational yokes be broken. I arrest the spirit of ancestry and I declare be gone from your life. Be gone. Aha. Baroske te bariakata. Randoske prende kapara. Be gone from your life now. Please, eyes closed. There are two people God is showing me. And your deliverance will happen now. Please, eyes closed everywhere. There are two people I'm seeing. Number one, there is a young man I'm seeing. I'm going to pray. There is a particular yoke the enemy has placed on your life. What I'm seeing, this spirit is represented by a woman, a feminine figure. And they, they come to molest you in dreams. But as I speak right now, the hand of God comes on you. And I declare divine separation. The power of God will come on you and you will see that woman living your life. I declare divine separation upon your life now. I break the yoke of that spirit. And you foul spirit. I command you to get out of that life. Out of that life to the outer darkness. 
never to return again in the name of Jesus this prayer generally is for people who experience stuff moving in their body unusual movements around your body but specifically I'm praying for somebody and what God is telling me is a lady help her because I will hear a shout I'm hearing a shout now I don't know whether you you ate poison or something yeah that's it but right now let that poison be evacuated from your systems by the blood of Jesus let it be evacuated now 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 is a major I'm still hearing another shout is a major work of deliverance let it be evacuated from your system right now by the blood of the lamb and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony let that poison depart from your systems now thank you father blessed be your name in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god praise strange deliverances have happened in fact deliverances are still happening now we keep waving your hands deliverances are still happening now yokes are breaking i see the lord breaking the chain around the right leg of a young man you will feel fire around your right leg now you will feel it you can't stand that chain is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking my god blessed be the name of the lord thank you father for tonight i release miracle jobs this season i said i release miracle jobs this season my goodness jesus 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 I see the Lord giving a job to somebody here and the organization starts with the letter C that's what I'm seeing <laughs> please help them letter C there's a military officer you are here and I see promotion coming to you very soon I don't know whether it's promotion in rank or in assignment I don't know whatever it is but I see promote I see the Lord promoting you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I release it right now I declare miracle jobs over the atmosphere even online I declare miracle jobs I declare miracle jobs that's what the spirit is telling me I read I declare miracle jobs I declare me aha many testimonies miracle job comes your way now in the name of Jesus you have taken all the glory you have taken all the praise you have taken all the minion you have taken all yes do we still have the, the woman you said that she was putting on a skirt Come, and huh? she has an abdominal problem. The one you said on the skirt, her name is Miss Aisha. A lady light skin putting on a skirt with a lower abdominal problem. That's the person here you are seeing. <laughs> was it a pain? I just feel a vibration on that. You felt a vibration like a move. Yes, but there's been a pain for over for more than a year now. In the name of Jesus, that growth is dissolved forever. Amen. That's what I just saw. It dissolved forever. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And you don't feel the pain again. Can we celebrate God for that? Amen. What's your name? Aisha. Aisha. Why is it I'm hearing another Aisha in the congregation? But this is not your name. It's like the name of a sister or something. Like the name of a sister. You are here, but it's like the name of a sister or something. I just heard. The Lord just said I should ask your name. There's somebody with that. Who is that? Please, could you come quickly? Huh? Her younger sister. Your, your younger sister is Aisha. 
goodness. Celebrate God. And they are coming one one. So you know that this is not guessing. You know, I wish we could continue, but there is no time. It's like I just started. The anointing just came now. But we have to close. Is it okay for me to declare the miracle money? Pick your phones. Stand up. Father, we declare this healing permanent in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. It's done forever, my dear. God bless you and the Lord grant you peace. Come. I still see God. Can we strike a deal? Huh? Because yes, it's like these days, I pray for many people and when they get the breakthrough, they run. <laughs> so I'm a wise man of God now. Amen. Amen. Can I shock you, madam? Yes, sir. Please, I apologize because of the time. In the next 10 minutes, we'll be done. Is that okay? Can I shock you? Yes, sir. There is a breakthrough coming into your life between now and 31st December. All right? Yes, but you are also secretly trusting God for some sort of favor in your job. All right? Yes, sir. And now the Lord is asking me to prophesy to you that in the name of Jesus, between now and 31st December, that favor is coming for you. Amen. And I see a major breakthrough financially. Amen. If it comes, are we going to share it into two? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Father, do it for her in the name of Jesus. I know you are you are, you, are, you criticize me. I'm looking for it so that I can be popular. No problem. Eh? Go and criticize me. Those of you that can collect miracle, but you will never come to appreciate God. And God is saying he will do it. And this financial breakthrough will be over 500,000 as I see. Amen. Father, let it be so. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now you see, you see, when the anointing is moving from one dimension to another, you will know by the prophecy. I told you I'm about to prophesy for your finances. You see God beginning to talk on finances, right? That's how it works. When God does it, tell me, but I will not collect the money, eh? I don't do that. All right? But God will do it and you will know that God is God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. you. Come. I'm laying my hands on your head. And in the name of Jesus, let the power of God come upon the head of Aisha now. And let every devil of oppression be broken from off her life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Where is Aisha now? Adamawa. She's in Adamawa? Yes. When you go back, I want you to place a call. Ask her. She will tell you she felt something on her head as around this time. Okay. Confirm next week by a testimony. Huh? Amen. All right, let's finish that quickly. Okay. The, the woman with the, the hole. Yeah. Who checked it? Pastor Henry checked it. Yeah, a nurse yes. checked it. Very good. Tell me the truth, sir. Okay. Sir, I didn't see any hole. There was no hole completely. No hole. Yes, sir. God is releasing creative miracle over your life and every missing gap is being completed now. Amen. Everything that is missing is being restored now. In the name of Jesus. Who did this for you? Jesus. Go back and worship and celebrate him. It's well with you. God bless you. Yes, quickly. Many of them are already holding their phones. Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Sister Joy Beatrus. She came in here with fever. Yes. But right now, she stands. She has been standing here for long now. Completely free of fever. Yes, sir. Give God the praise. Come, let's let's perfect it. It's over in the name of Jesus. You will never be sick again. In Jesus' name. Please help her. It's done. Apostle, this is Elisha Cynthia. She has been having running nose throughout last week she's showing me the the, the, the napkins she's yes, been having running nose completely yes throughout last week but she's healed now of headache and running nose completely yes sir. are you sure is, is it not still there no, no, no completely no, no. Yes, sir. can we give god praise in case you don't know kata is one of the hardest sickness to go it doesn't just go you rebuke it do not go you take drugs it do not go it just goes on its own you are healed completely in the name of Jesus. Sir. Lift your phones up. Yes. There's a documented testimony here. Documented testimony. This is Uchechi Ilonwa. She has been having sharp pain around her chest. It lasts for 15 years. 
and she's healed 15 years 15 years give God the biggest praise that you can hallelujah now let's do it very quickly we are going to do two things at a time I asked us to come with our prayer request do we have them can we collect them very quickly and then I will release a financial grace on you then we'll take the altar call and that's all for tonight huh okay I called you out okay call let me just touch you it is well with you in the name of Jesus peace in the name of Jesus it's done it's done amen now i'm going to make an altar call listen at the end of these two prayers i'm going to make an altar call and i want you to listen ushers can we get the offering basket round quickly make sure you submit your prayer points and we'll pray on them i apologize for our time but let's just have the next few minutes and we'll round up is that okay please is that okay is that okay I'm going to make an altar call listen and this altar call I will make at the end is for two sets of people number one you want to receive Jesus into your life you want to be born again and number two or, or perhaps you want to be rededicated back you want to rededicate your life and then number two you are struggling with serious addiction and habits join them these two categories when i make the altar call i want you to come out can we in the next 60 seconds submit our prayer requests quickly and then we'll pray on them when you are done you could just stand and so that we'll pray what song are we going to sing now huh? in the name of jesus <laughs> there is power in Please submit them very quickly so that we can pray. And what will happen? Break every, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Now let's prophesy. I hear the chains. I hear the chains. Submitting your prayer requests as we prophesy. I see the change. I see the change. Breaking. Breaking. One more time. I hear the change. I hear the change. Falling. Falling. I see the change. Breaking. I see the change. I see the change. Breaking. One more time. I hear the change Hey! 
the request quickly can i have the request stretch your hands towards me and the prayer request and i want you to tell god enough is enough let these egyptians that you see today be seen forever no more stretch your hands and begin to pray in the name of jesus i said pray i didn't say discuss i said pray let these egyptians be rolled away let every request be converted to a testimony we send healing to those who are sick we send deliverance to those who are afflicted we send breakthrough to those who are in need of breakthrough we declare divine speed and acceleration we send peace to those who are in distress and crisis families that are under demonic siege be delivered families that are about to split apart be restored are you praying are you praying are you praying let age-long captivity be rolled away let joblessness be broken let every attack come to an end let your loved ones be saved let your loved ones be saved hallelujah father in the name of jesus i stand before you upon the covenant of this house and the covenant that i have with you and in the name of jesus i declare within 30 days let these situations be converted to testimonies let every request here in 30 days time be answered in the name of jesus send peace to those that are in this distress send healing to the brokenhearted send deliverance to those that are under oppression in the name of the lord jesus we declare divine visitation divine visitation and lord i declare by the anointing of the holy ghost that by sunday next week some of them will return back with testimonies in the name of jesus it's done in jesus name amen now can i do an altar call i know i told you i will pray for your finances but that will be at the end can i do the altar call now because we have to close at least before seven is that okay please be upstanding everybody except you are there's nobody that should be sick here but be upstanding There are two set of people that I want to make this altar call. I think you can you can pack this away. While we are upstanding and there's no movement anywhere, just allow the protocol to do their work. If you are here, you have enjoyed the service, you have heard the word, you have experienced the move of God, the miracles, the healings, and everything, but you know you are not born again. This is your moment, this is your opportunity. You would have left the service before now but somehow god who drew you here kept you to this time so that you can make your ways right with him you know you don't have the life of god in you you are not sure of your eternal destination and you have been saying in your heart that if i will make the altar call you will not be ashamed to respond perhaps as i'm talking right now the holy spirit is moving upon your heart he's talking to you and you can feel him you can hear his voice I want you to make your way to the front very quickly if you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Or perhaps you need to rededicate your life. You used to be a Christian, but the pressures of life, a lot of things have happened and you don't know where you are with the Lord. I want you to step forward so that we can rededicate you back to the Lord. Number two, you are here, you are struggling with serious addiction, bondage. Nobody knows. It's just up to you. If you will not be ashamed, I want you to join these ones. God is about to deliver you and set you free. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I will count to 10. If you are in any of this category, I want you to rush forward very quickly. I didn't say walk. Run as though there is fire on the mountain. You can feel God moving upon your heart. You can feel the Holy Spirit pricking your conscience. 
as I'm talking to you right now, I want you to run to the front quickly. Number one, two, three, clap, clap as they're coming. Please run as fast as you can. Say yes to Jesus. The past is over. It's time for a new place with God. Four, five, six, seven. You know God is still talking to you, but you are ashamed. Maybe your friend can escort you. Maybe your neighbor can escort you. But you need to make your ways right with the Lord. Eight, nine, and finally ten. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I there are still two people God is talking to. That's why I'm singing. I'm waiting for you. Every step that I take. There are still two people. I'm waiting for you. Win the argument over your mind. Forget about shame and say yes to Jesus. Let him restore you. There are still two people. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you. Oh Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Those of you in front, I want you to just talk to God. Repent of your sin. And say yes to me. Stretch your hands towards them. Those of you in front, I salute and I admire your courage. And I want you to know that your life is about to begin again. Your life is about to begin afresh. I want you to just repeat this prayer after me and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sins. And I receive eternal life. I believe that you died and you rose again for my salvation. And I confess that you are Lord over my life, both now and forever. In Jesus' name. Father, I declare by the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, let the name of the Lord be named upon them. I declare that they receive eternal life and they receive victory over sin, over Satan, and over death in the name of Jesus. Father, empower them by your spirit to live for you all the days of, your, of their lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.